Hello there, welcome to the impromptu video recorded with a phone. So uh, I apologize for the sound quality because it's indubitably going to be abysmal. Anyhow, see this? This is my Acer Soundtrue Duralux, which I am servicing because it's going to get mounted to a new bike. Surprise! I bought one and the torque is going to get sold. Anyhow, I got to thinking that this poor thing didn't have really easy life with me ever since I bought it in 2013, I believe. So I had it for four years out of that seven and I've been abusing it for that four years. So I've gotten a little sad and then I thought to myself, I need to keep the tradition going. So how am I going to uh, harm this fork now? Are you interested to settle the age old, age old question? Difficult. Age old question. Uh, can you powder coat lowers of a fork? I am because uh, the paint I well, apply the year ago starts to flake off. So I want to paint it again, but doing it on my own probably is not a good idea because I know it isn't really well long lasting. So I think I'm going to powder coat it, which means I have to take it apart, seal some well, holes in it, so I'm not going to get any paint inside and carry it to some sort of a place which is going to do the deed for me. Okay, so this is the fork disassembled. As you can see, I have decided upon painting both the crown and the lower legs because I want to be that guy on the trailhead who has a custom fork and it's clearly visible. I have also decided that this fork is going to get new dust seals because I should have replaced them three years ago. Anyhow, you might be wondering what are the problems with painting a fork? Well, there are several actually. First of all, uh, the adhesion of magnesium, which is used to cast lower legs, uh, is, well, kinda iffy. It's very difficult to paint magnesium, lower, uh, magnesium lowers. As you can see, uh, the liquid paint I have added, I have uh, applied a year ago, starts to flake. This is where a band of a, of a mood guard was holding the fork and Entirely, entire uh, layer of paint has flaked off as a bare metal here. And obviously I don't know whether the plastic, which is actual powder coat, is going to hold to the, uh, to the lowers. Now another problem is that uh, once uh, the item is painted, it has to be heated to a temperature between 180 and 240 degrees and kept in that temperature for some time in order to harden the paint, obviously. First of all, we don't know how magnesium is going to react to it, it shouldn't. Two, we don't know how the uh, anodi anodization of the upper, uh, upper stanchions is going to react to it, because this anodization isn't just some sort of a color, it is actually a lubrication of the, uh, of the upper legs. I don't know how that's going to react to this heating. What you don't see here are bushings inside of a fork which guide the upper legs inside the lowers, and they are made of something which might react uh, uh, in a rather volatile way to being heated and uh, last but not least uh, obviously the entire thing has uh, a sludge of old lubrication inside which can't be really cleaned without i don't know throwing it into a dishwasher or something like that i can't really do this because i don't really know whether that's going to be healthy for the dishwasher anyhow once that it's old uh, lubricant is going to get heated, it's going to pour out of the fork and that seems like a no, problem. And another thing about uh, the entire painting process, obviously the uh, surface of this and this has to be uh, prepared for painting. This is anodized, that's not going to be a problem, I have done this before. However, this thing is magnesium, as you already know, and I don't know whether the process of sandblasting, something like this, is healthy. Or this so we'll see and as you can see there are quite a few problems to be overcome and I am well entirely uh, prepared that I'm going to get a heap of old well, scrap quite expensive once I'm done with the process however if I'm going to get if I'm going to be successful with it I'm going to have a pretty 
yellow fork that's going to match my soon to be built yellow bike. There you go! Now thanks to the magic of video editing, he waited 10 seconds or however long I'm going to make the intermission for something it took 2 days. And I'm quite, uh, well, surprised it took just 2 days because usually I wait quite a bit longer. But I guess that the current situation made, well, the painter have less orders or something. Anyway, I have just uh, brought this to the workshop, I have done a little preliminary uh, work on it, but I'm going to show you all the problems with the fork. But, let's start with the basics. It seems that it's going to work fine. But, let's go through, every, through all the details here. So these are the lowers. Overall the quality of the work is fair, but there are quite a few blemishes. I don't know whether you could be able to see them in this light. You want to be, it's going to be too bright. But there are quite a few blemishes, but I guess that's the nature of the process. All the color coated stuff I had had this issue. Unfortunately, if you look to the inside, you'll notice that there is some paint inside, and in one place there's even paint on the on the bushing. Overall, it doesn't really speak very well of the craftsmanship of the guy who was doing this. But it's passable, and I guess I'm going to be needing to replace the bushings anyway, so who cares. As you can see here, on the upper sanctions, there is some paint inside, I hope it's going to be visible, which speaks very poorly of the craftsmanship uh, of the guy who was doing this, once again, because I provided plugs specifically to avoid this problem. No, this is fresh, so... Uh, there's some dust there, I haven't cleaned it yet. Why is it there? I don't know, it was plugged. But apparently it's not going to be plugged anymore, I need to clean it. The upper stanchion tubes seem to be untouched, however, they are quite a bit rough, there's some sort of dust on it. So, I'll, so I'm going to need to clean them. But overall it seems that there is no damage done other than uh, leftovers of the paint, oh, as you can see here, as the sanctions go, there is some leftover paint or leftover powder, I have to clean it and the, a bit of, uh, a bit of the, of the sanction is painted as well. Overall this speaks very badly about the craftsmanship of the guy for the third time and it added me some work. So what I'm going to be doing now? First of all, I'm going to put away the lower, uh, the lower legs. I'm not going to be using them. And I need to service the upper ones. First of all, I need to clean uh, the, the paint from below the crown here. Then I'm going to uh, use steel wool. Like this one. Oh, there you go. Steel wool. Polishing paste and wax to uh, smoothen the, the, the sanctions on the outside and I hope to clean the inside as well. So, see you in, I don't know, 20 minutes. I'm not going to show it because it's not really relevant. I just noticed there's a little color change here which apparently means that, well, I think it means that the temperature during the hardening of the paint dance has done something to the upper tubes. This might mean this might mean that they're dead. I'm going to trash them in a minute in a short order. But let's be optimistic. And this is end result. If I say so myself, I think it looks actually quite fabulous. However, it still works. Well, not very well, because this particular fork, I know that this particular item or this particular series of forks suffers from uh, quite significant sanction friction, so it works so-so. It works on big stuff, but it's not really sensitive. It seems to be working correctly, doesn't seem to have suffered much damage, however, it is unknown how much damage 
it actually suffered because the process obviously wasn't well benign to the entire fork. You could see that uh, uh, there was some discoloration on the stanchion after the process which wasn't there before. I don't know whether this thinned the layer of uh, lubrication on this on the stanchion or not and this and caused some sort of lasting damage. There's this splotch here which might, which might think that this fork is dead and I don't know it yet. Everything is going to be well revealed when I mount it to a bike I'm currently building. There's a spot there. And um, what, what the f And what would be my final thought about this? Well, should you do any of this? Probably not. You see, the problem is that uh, this process, even from uh, this particular piece, doesn't seem to be, well, very straightforward. And if you're trying to paint something that works correctly and it's quite expensive, you might end up with a broken fork. Because you see, this thing actually would cost, I don't know, 50 euros maybe. So it's not some sort of a much loss if I broke it, that's why I tried to do it. So if you have the time to prepare the fork and you have the time to, well, deal with the consequences after the painting is done and you have someone who's competent, you might risk it because it seems it's going to work fine. However, that's always the however. We'll see how it performs when I, once I mount it on the bike that I have laying on the frame. So, I hope you found this informative, I hope to see you in the next video, share, like, subscribe, and I already told you that I want to see you in the next video, so bye!